Hey, Ben Llewellyn, and I'm talking today about Portuguese, one of the world's major languages. Where did it come from? Yes, Portugal, but how did it form? And what's its history? If you were interested in languages, humanities, and cultural stuff, why not subscribe now so you don't miss any of the action? Thanks. Portuguese is a member of the Latin or Romance family of languages like Spanish, Catalan, Romanian, French, and so on. And the way it formed, like the rest of them, it's influenced by what was there before it. Now, before the Romans came and gave them Latin, or imposed Latin, there were two main language groups that would influence what would then become Portuguese. The first was Galician. And this was a Celtic language, perhaps with pre-Indo-European influences. And then in the middle part of present-day Portugal you had Lusitanian. And this was in parts of Spain as well, but it was a pre-Indo-European language, probably. And these would later influence Portuguese as it formed. When the Romans came into Hispania or the Iberian Peninsula in the 3rd century BC, there were already peoples there. And they were of a wide variety of different language groups and languages. All the way from the Iberian languages, the Basques in the north, and the Lusitanians in the west, modern day Portugal, and a series of Celtic peoples and tribes between and around these groups. So, pre-Roman languages have left a deep mark on Portuguese, much deeper than most of the Latin-based languages. We have upwards of 3,000 words in modern-day Portuguese, which are pre-Roman or Celtic in origin. And this is by far the, the largest influence after Latin on the Portuguese language. Words like the words for cow, uh, the word for goat, for beer, and the word for horn. The Romans opened up administrative centers and brought in troops. They opened up markets and made Latin the official language of pretty much everything. This caused the people of what would become Portugal to gradually adopt Latin, but their old languages still held on and influenced this Latin that they came to speak, which was not a standardized Latin. It came to be known as Vulgar Latin. And this term, Vulgar Latin, would carry on for many centuries across the Roman world to describe the Latin that the native peoples began speaking as their native languages influenced the Latin that had been imposed upon their countries. This went on for about 700 years, and so toward the end of the Roman period, the people of Portugal and Galicia were very Latinized, except for the north in Galicia, they did hold on to some Celtic roots. However, there was a German people called the Suevi, who in the end of the Roman Empire decided they had enough of this cold business and migrated as a large group all the way down to present-day Galicia and northern Portugal and established a kingdom there, the Kingdom of Suebi. And the Kingdom of Suebi lasted for a little over a hundred years before being absorbed into another Germanic kingdom that had grown, the Visigothic Kingdom. And this left another deep imprint upon the what would become the Portuguese Galician language because this period lasted for 300 years. And it gave words like ganso for goose, orgullo for pride, brigar to fight. Excluding modern English, modern Portuguese has taken over 600 words from these Germanic languages. Most of them from this original kingdom of Suebi, which was centered around the area from which Galician Portuguese would emerge as a single language before those two diverged later on. Now from the year 711, the Moors invaded from Africa 
and they brought Arabic with them to the Iberian Peninsula. Arabic was used in administration. Many of the Arabic words are that are taken from Arabic are from foods or crafts, but more so from administration and commercial aspects. And this shows what strata of society the Arabic came to influence Portuguese. And it also gives names from the south of Portugal, toponyms or place names like the Algarve. It is a strange fact, however, that there's not a single word in Portuguese which describes human emotion which comes from Arabic. And this may give us a glimpse into the fact that Arabic was the language of an invader seen from the stance of an administrative position. We have over 900 words in Portuguese from Arabic, so it's a significant influence. And we have words, many of them coming from Spanish into Portuguese, which are of Arabic origin as well. So it's a significant part of what makes Portuguese a very unique language. North of where the Arabs had established Muslim control of the Iberian Peninsula, the various Latin languages that would become Spanish, Asturian, Galician, Portuguese, and Catalan, and the non-Latins Basque in the north, continue to develop independently of Arabic. And Portuguese Galician did develop in a markedly different way in some aspects linguistically from their Spanish neighbors. It developed a much more nasal aspect, and this may have been a substrata of the language that was already there. Now, the earliest records of Portuguese come from the 9th century in present-day Galicia, when the people rebelled against King Silas of Asturias, who, as it happened, used Galician Portuguese in written records. In the 10th and 11th centuries, Galician Portuguese came to be influenced by Lusitan and Provençal, uh, present-day French, southern branches of the Franco branches of Latin. And what it gave them was orthography, ways of writing, like the sedia, this letter here. And it gave them a lot of influence in terms of vocabulary as well. The word for street is not related to camino, like in Spanish, but rua, which comes from rue, which is obviously like French. And this left a deep mark that pushed Portuguese in a different direction than Spanish. Rather than using an accent mark above the N, like you see in Spanish, the Portuguese put an H after it. Rather than having double L, like you see in Spanish, the Portuguese put an LH. And so it gave it a new direction. Up until 1143, Galicia had been pretty much unified in senses of administration with much of the South. However, in the year 1143, Portugal became a kingdom and Galicia was ceded to the kingdom of Leon Castile. This forced Galician Portuguese to begin to diverge into two different languages or at least diverge in terms of being a significantly different dialect. It's up for debate, but it did switch paths at this point with Portuguese in the south gaining prestige and Galician in the north losing prestige. As Galician and Portugal were being separated by borders, there was a period of Galician Portuguese during the same time in which its court poetry was spreading across the Iberian Peninsula. The lyricists, the troubadores, the traveling poets, and they were the most in demand across the Iberian Peninsula in terms of poetry and it really was igniting a golden age as we look back upon what was becoming Portuguese. King Denis in 1290 decided to establish a university at Coimbra and he made vulgar Latin the official language and by vulgar Latin of course he meant Portuguese not standard Latin which then he called Portuguese and made it the official language of the kingdom. Not bad for one guy. Now, so from this point forward, Portuguese became part of the administration of the Kingdom of Portugal, and the number of writings increases. It becomes more standardized, 
we have less of a dialect division except with Galicia in the north. Modern Portuguese begins in the year 1516 and we really have the division here between modern and old Portuguese with the publishing of Cancionero Geral by Garcia de Resindia. And this had over a thousand poems by almost 300 different poets. Much of it was in Portuguese, though also Galician and Castilian, but to have this much at that early date in the Portuguese language of a standardized variety left a deep impact upon the Portuguese language, and the language begins to develop at a much faster rate from this forward. You also have the beginning of true epics in the language, epic poetry. Portugal entered the Renaissance and it began to take in work, words and works from classical Latin and Greek and this changed the Portuguese language like much of the other large languages of Europe at the time. It, the Renaissance changed the language and made it more Latin and as it created a colonial empire mainly in Brazil, but also in Africa. It brought back words from the indigenous peoples of these places, which then altered and fused and gave birth to new ideas in Portuguese. In 1572, we get the epic poem of Lusiades, or the Lusiades. And this is an uh, epic about the travels of Vasco da Gama, who was the first European to find a sea route to India, and this becomes Portugal's national epic, some considering the finest work in the Portuguese language, compared to the Aeneid by Virgil, Rome's national epic. This was written by Luiz Vaz de Camões. And this really is the gate of Portuguese expressing itself for the first time is saying this is a global language and we are one of the world's great centers of poetry and expression through our language. But as we reach that point here in the 16th century and the 17th century, you do have modern Portuguese and what it is today, a global language, the sixth largest language in the world with a deep, rich history that makes it unique. And that's how Portuguese became what it is. If you have any questions about Portuguese and want to leave a comment, I'd be happy to do what I can to answer that for you. And why not leave a like? And if you're new here, hey, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.